This is a Pinball News production. Here's Jack. Can everybody hear me, all 30 of you? Uh, happy to be here. Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate it very much. Um, I'm going to go up here, actually. Can anybody, what's the next letter after the letter Q? What is that letter? R. All right, okay. R. So uh, today we're going to talk about Jersey Jack Pinball and Pirates of the Caribbean. And kind of like everything else, I threw something together. If anybody has any questions, just uh, Raise your hand, school style, and I'll try to answer. Thanks for wearing that throwback uh, Jersey Jack shirt. Reminds me of the old days. Good memories and, and not so good memories, but it was really great. All right, Butch, let's go. Make pinball great again. I love it. You know, we, we borrowed that, and I had to get it trademarked because somebody stole it from us, believe it or not. I don't want to spend any money, but somebody with a bar in... Uh, in uh, in uh, South Carolina, no, where was it? Yeah, someplace like that. They, they kind of stole it from us. So all we wanted to do was make pinball great again. But I think we're almost at the stage where we can say pinball is kind of great. You know? Go ahead. Ah, so there's Tommy and his wonderful wife. And, and you guys do a great job. I want to thank you again. We have Mutual Admiration Society. This show has really come unbelievable three years. I go to shows all over the world. I really lose track of how many shows I go to. But, you know, this venue is really great. Um, there's a good vibe here. Everybody's here to have fun, and there's a lot of games, and it just continues to grow. And I'm really proud to uh, have, have been here you know, in the third year with you guys. And every year, um, you know, I hope to make it back every year. So it's great. And there's a picture with Jonathan. Where's that pain in the ass? There he is. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Hi, You know, usually Jonathan and Martin, uh, my unofficial sidekicks, we travel around the whole world going to different shows, whether we're in France or in the Netherlands or somewhere in China, wherever wherever it is, it's kind of funny. But and, uh, if, if, did anybody get Jonathan's new magazine? Did anybody get it? Okay, so Jonathan, you have a lot of work to do, my friend. This is not even a magazine, it's a novella. It's, hey, Bill Brandes, how are you, buddy? Come hey, on, Bill. Welcome, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Arr! Arr! So, uh, it's amazing. You know, I have uh, my carry-on bag over there, my little backpack. It weighed like eight pounds before he gave me the book. It's 33 pounds now. So uh, I don't even know when, and I'm flying out today, you know, I have to board my flight in about an hour, two hours from now. So it was a quick in and a quick out. I gotta be home for a family can, event tomorrow. I can see why you walk like Quasimodo when you're wearing this. Yeah, it's, it's like that crap. book, it's, it's just, you know, it's just insane. I mean, you think I'm kidding you. It's, it's, I can't get it in. Get it back in. I'm not gonna get it back in. <laughs> that man is insane. Uh, see if you can get this back in there for I'll me. I'll take care of that, yeah. Half hour and I'm talking. It's what I do, right. yeah. So, avail yourself of this amazing publication. He does an amazing job, and uh, thank you. As does Martin. You know, with without the people that really support the infrastructure of the industry, uh, nobody knows if the tree fell down in the woods. You guys report that stuff, so thank you. Butch, wake up. Okay. No, no. Just so, you know, we kind of started with Wizard of Oz, and Wizard of Oz is still my favorite game. Everybody says to me, uh, what's your favorite game? Certainly, I love Pirates. You know, I love Dial In. I love The Hobbit, but Wizard of Oz um, is always great, and it's always a favorite shot of mine like kind of in the beginning when we were building the game. And we're gonna be building them again this year. Uh, Tommy, take note of that, because we'll be building more Wizard of Oz games. Go ahead, what? 
And there's some hobbits. We uh, still have a couple of them in stock. Those, I think, were Black Arrow games that we built. We built around 2,000 hobbits so far, and we built more than, close to 4,000 Wizard of Oz games. So that's where we're at uh, right now. Dialed in, um, great game, right? Pat Lawler, bring Pat, Pat Lawler back to pinball. And uh, a, a game where, you know, we let Pat pick a theme and an idea and really run with it. And I knew it was going to be difficult because people wouldn't understand what it is, but it took a little bit of time to do that. And I'm really happy that uh, we went that way. Um, kind of cool to always see boxes of games. You know, it was many, many years that we had no box games in the building. So actually right now, if people, uh, distributors around the world that we supply, um, they're looking for dialed in, we have some in boxes. They're looking for Hobbit, we have some in boxes. So it's kind of cool to have games in stock when people want something. Um, we get a lot of uh, people come to the factory. Uh, tours all the time, the door's always open. We have people coming all the time. Uh, this was a school group uh, that came uh, a little bit more than a year ago. And they were studying um, uh, some physics in a class and their assignment was to actually build a pinball machine. And this group that came, uh, none of them were standing there with phones. Uh, you know, they were all actually listening and interested. And at that time in the showroom, we had a Hobbit, and all the boys were all over the Hobbit, and we had a Wizard of Oz, and all the girls were all over the, uh, the Wizard of Oz. So um, that, was, that was one of the reasons why I did Wizard of Oz, to attract young people, and especially girls and women, to pinball. And this is in my office. Uh, I get to sign, you see that box in the foreground. Sometimes there are uh, seconds or things that don't make it to the assembly line. And what happens with those things, I sign them, and instead of throwing them in the garbage, they tell me they become collectibles. So everybody, we were doing a little question and answer about the little tour, and everybody got a little uh, memento of the visit to the factory. One day these two, two guys came in and they're both uh, Purple Heart War Hero kind of guys. And they wanted to know what was this Jersey Jack pinball that they kept driving by. And I gave them a factory tour and um, they invited me to come. God, you can go to the next one, Butch. They invited me to come to their uh, retirement community, which is nearby. Uh, because, you know, pinball was something that they grew up with, but they hadn't seen them in a long, long time, and the guy that's playing the game there is over 90 years old, and we did a little presentation, we brought the game in there, and they, they really enjoyed it, and it showed me again that pinball is something that translates itself from very young people to a little bit older people. That gentleman, I remember, was about 93, that was playing the game, and honestly, uh, you know, they didn't want me to take the game, <laughs> they didn't want to me to take the games, those guys, uh, they had a really, really great time, and, and it was kind of cool to thank all of them for their service. Pretty much all the gentlemen in that room, uh, they, they were in this, you know, U.S. military service. Um, go ahead, you can go. Um, that's a shot from, I think, a couple of years ago. Uh, Pinball Expo has been a place where we've shown a lot of our games the last few years. Um, and uh, this, I think, was the time that we should have dialed in. So it's pretty cool to be able to reveal pinball. And really the guys that stream things, you know, the Jack Dangers of the world and people like that, and certainly Morton and, 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 and Jonathan doing their thing, and Jared, everybody that does that, it brings more people to pinball, it exposes more people. Because, you know, people are not only rediscovering pinball, but they are discovering pinball for the first time. Uh, that was at the reveal of Dialed In, and that's Steve Sabota, and he's, this is a picture I call Love at First Sight. So, uh, you know, he's playing that game with his eyes, and uh, there is Pat Lawler. It was really cool bringing him back to pinball, and uh, Pat is working on his next game for Jersey Jack Pinball, which we'll show next year. And uh, that's my son, Jack, on the other side of Pat. That was pretty much the first day that we started producing Dialed In. And I'm happily, this is a few months ago, I'm happily reading the first uh, 
printed manual for dialed in, and uh, believe it or not, we're still sending out those manuals now. Uh, there's like 1,500 manuals that have to be put in the mail to distributors and different people. So if you didn't, if you bought a dialed in, who here has a dialed in? Okay, well, tell me you got a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, so if you didn't get a manual, you have an LE or a CE game, uh, you'll be getting your manual soon. And the manual is just an amazing, amazing work by Butch. Um, just an amazing resource. It really helps us uh, solve problems with our customers if they have service issues or all kinds of questions. Um, you know, we man the phone pretty much uh, 24 hours a day with the service people we have on the phone every day of the week. But if we didn't have that manual, we'd need about a dozen people answering the phone. And it's about two or three times as big as Jonathan's magazine. So. It is. And I'm, I'm glad I don't have one to put in my bag because I wouldn't Or drop on this poor table up here. This is down in Aussie land, down in Australia. And uh, my son was there with me. We were there last, last um, I think that was October, November, when we first introduced Pirates. I'll be back there for December 1st. They have a big pinball show. They'll have the first container of Pirates of the Caribbean there, and uh, it's, it's really cool. That, that continent loves pinball. Yeah. And that's our distributor, uh, Mr. Wayne Gillard, Mr. Pinball Australia, the gentleman wearing the tile in shirt. Ah, that's a picture of the spinning disc, it looks like, right? That's a, that's a disc with um, you are the right. two discs, right? Yeah. And that's on the production game out here. Uh, I don't know where this is. I threw some pictures in from different shows around the world. This might have been Flip Expo, right? And Le Trepour France, right? Right, you can recognize that. We had pirates don't, there. Don't speak for all around our games, all en français. So, uh, yeah. Uh, there's some crazy people at, I guess, the Northwest Pinball Show. That's. Um, Eval from Shorties and uh, one of and our crazy friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was good. These shows are great. Uh, the, you know where that is, Jonathan? Where you guy? You don't know where that is, right? You gotta get, that's in Austria, and that's um, uh, you know uh, one of our distributors and the gentleman that has the museum there. Martin, who is that? What's his name again? The guy with the museum. Uh, we'll have to go back to the we'll have to go back to the uh, files, but yeah, uh, that's in that's in Pennsylvania, Allentown, a couple of years ago, and that's Butch in Allentown this year with one of our, one of our uh, customers, that one of our employees actually that won one of the tournaments. So they don't just build pinball machines; they. Uh, they play pinball as well. And uh, this time last year, it popped up on my timeline. Today I went to Poland. So we were all in Poland last year, right? Martin, Martin and I were uh, captive in, uh, in uh, Batum, uh, what is it? Bait, Baitum? Beton. Beton. Beton, uh, Poland. And uh, I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't have a car. And everything outside, all the signs, they read C-Z-Y-Z-Y-S-Y-C-Z-X-Y. And I can't read anything, so I had to, I had to stay there. It was well, a lot of fun. Hats. I went to the Krakow Pinball Museum, and I was in Warsaw, and there's a lot of pinball there. For a little, for a little country, there's a lot of pinball there. And they ripped off, Look at the hat. They ripped yeah. off my hat, make pinball great there's, again, there's rip Krakow right there. Pinball. I let them do that. So, you know, and I, I brought really back awesome. a lot of really good chocolate from, for uh, Vinny in the parts department, because one of the things I have to do is bring chocolate back. That's also in Austria. Um, with one of our long-time customers there. And uh, that's our distributor in uh, Luxembourg, that's Christoph, uh, with his collection, This Is At Home. So uh, he's great. Uh, that's an IAPA show. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That's your dad, wasn't it? That was my dad playing the game, yeah. My dad, in that picture, was probably about 88, 89 years old. Yeah. Another IAPA show, I think. Um, that's our dealer, one of our dealers in Germany, um, that's Pinball Universe. So they're, uh, they're really great and they have a show at the end of this month where I don't know where I'm going at the end of this month, if I'm going to the Dutch event or their event or I don't know where I'm going. I'm going somewhere. It makes two of us. Don't even know. Uh, 
that's when I was in France in April. Uh, on my way up to uh, the north of France, I got to stop at the Louvre. So for me, you know, it's not all work, you know, I'm terrible what I do, you know, I'm so blessed, and I thank God, but uh, I got to spend the day at the Louvre, and that was pretty cool. I didn't know you could shoot things out of your fingers. Like yeah, you know, it was really weird. I just stuck my, you know, it was a weird picture, Butch. Um, I didn't know that was there, and I stuck my hands up like the uh, president of France. No, no, own strength. Yeah, and I uh, formed a W, which maybe it means wizard, I don't know. But somebody noticed that other than me, I didn't even realize that. Afterwards. Victory, victory. Victory, yeah, that yeah, was funny. So I threw in some old pictures. Uh, that's somebody that used to be me when I was 14 years old, and that's me on social media. Um, Breaker one. So I was on CB radio, and it was great. It was great to uh, uh, get to talk to people and, and bring me kind of out of my shell. And of course, the case on my radio was open because I had my hands in it, always modifying things. and always tinkering with electronics and uh, learning, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I was in high school, I liked the cowlick on the back of my hair, I don't think I have that now. And I was probably- You just can't be seen behind you, that's all you saw. Doing about. something with a signal generator or something like that, who the hell knows, you know, I don't know. Uh, that's the guy that hired me in the amusement business, this was his 70th birthday, and uh, this is in 1996. I had one of those Burt Reynolds kind of mustaches. Or a uh, mustache. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Heinz, uh, Heinz uh, taught me about fixing electromechanical pinball machines. I was only going to do it for six months. Do your uh, Heinz voice. Yeah, yeah, Heinz, yeah, yeah, you know. He asked me some important questions before he hired me. He said, uh, you know how a solo? Yeah. You know the meters committee? Yeah. All right, you're hired. So, uh, yeah, that, it was a lot of fun. He was a great guy. He passed away about six months after this. So, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe there's a magnetron out there. I didn't see one, or a card whiz. I know I played a uh, Royal Flush, and this is circa 1975, one of those great, famous sweaters that my mom did to me. But I, st I still have the sweater. I can't throw it away, so. Uh, Probably yeah. still have the screwdriver. Yeah, it was a while ago, yeah. Yeah, I do have, well, you know, one of my tool sets. Um, this popped up on Facebook the other day. Uh, it was actually the 43rd year that I'm in the industry, September 5th, 1975, and it popped up on my Facebook, and of course I took the picture with the wrong game. Bigfoot. I should have taken the picture with Bigfoot. Uh, everybody wanted to know where that went. But uh, it was very cool. This was at a show in, um, in uh, at the Conrad Hilton in uh, Chicago, and those shows were attended by thousands of people. This is just slightly a few years later. If you go back and forth, you can see, go back one, Butch. You know, you can see that the game really didn't change. Yeah, the machine uh, still looks good. Yeah, the machine looks good. I, I kind of look okay, you know. Hey, yeah, you're, you're hanging in there. Still got, still got most of my senses about me. You know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, oh, wow. This is my favorite. So this, this I know is your favorite. You know, so timeline of this is uh, March of 1977. It's probably Easter Sunday. Well, I've got news for you. I'll give you the timeline, Jonathan. So this is Easter Sunday, 1977, which is March. And Saturday Night Fever did not come out until November of 1977. John Travolta copied you. Absolutely, that, without that. question. You know, everybody in Brooklyn who weighed 120 pounds looked like that. So uh, that was pretty much it. That was my disco days. And, you know, Jonathan, if you played some disco last night, you would have seen me dance like John Travolta. But you missed your opportunity. So the next time you DJ, we'll have to we'll have to get on the floor and uh, sh show you what we used to do in Brooklyn years ago. And don't ask him to do car wheels either. Right. That's okay. So Jen put this picture up a long time ago. My daughter Jen, and you know you didn't know that I like pirate games, right? And so if you didn't know, there's a Captain Kid. Who the heck made that one? Not Gottlieb, no. That was like uh, Sagasa, one of those companies that was a Spanish game. And that was in my, that was at my parents' basement. That is New Year's Eve, 1977. So that's where that is. And I don't have those pants, belt, or shirt anymore. And uh, I wouldn't be able to fit in them anyway. It was probably a 20, 
five waist, and now I'm a 30 waist, so it wouldn't happen. Just wouldn't be able to. Is it day or 26? No, no, I could lose a couple of pounds. You know, there Thank I God you lost that mustache. Yeah, That's so, all I can think. well, you know, I did shave it a few years ago. That's 1990 at IAPA. And that's Wally and Dinah Roberts. They had a big, um, they were big concessionaires. They're big owners of amusement centers in Coney Island. And so this is before amusement games went to the amusement park show. This was strictly a show for amusement park um, operators and concessionaires. There were no video games there. There were no pinball machines there. And this was in Washington, D.C. I took a train ride down for the day and came back up and uh, I said, how come there's no games here? You know, this is, and now IAPA is the premier event for our industry uh, to showcase new games out on the commercial side of things. Um, this is one of our open houses at the factory. We used to do this every year until it became, uh, you know, crazy because there's no room in the factory anymore for anything. So this is 2015, um, and, and it was a lot of fun. These guys, um, that's uh, Ryan C. on the left from Australia, and that's Charlie from uh, New York in the middle, and that's Dave, one of our employees. I think this is a couple months ago I came to visit. Um, as I said, everybody, everybody's welcome, whoever they are. Knock on the door, ring the bell, come on in, and we'll show you what a pinball factory is. It's Dave has cool. been there a long time. Dave's been there from the beginning. You've got great a JJP game he put on your slingshots and pop bumpers. Yep. Yeah, great guy. He, he's always working at the first few stations. This is uh, an IAPA show, and that's Charlie and his brother. Every year that we do IAPA, what do they ask me for, Butch? What do they ask you for? I passes, know. right? Can you yeah. get me in the show? Yeah, and then the next thing you know, that he's got passes for his wife or something, so one of these guys will be wearing his wife's pass, you know, Joanne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Then they trade off, and they meet somebody at the door, and they hand it to them, and they come in and join right. It's getting harder to do that. All week. Now they scan you, and if they scan you twice, they want to take your badge away. So we don't need those thinking badges. Sweet. Um, we get people from all kinds of news media and things like that. It happens that Dave's in this picture, too. This is on the boutique line. We have a small line in the back of the building. And at this point, uh, we're building Wizard of Oz there. So we'll have the big line building, um, right now building Pirates in the small line building dialed in right now. But, uh, you know, we get a lot of press in there. We're involved in a lot of different charities. Um, we never say no. And we get involved either uh, donating money or games or games at discount and things like that. This was at, um, I think this was up in New England where the Patriots play this. Uh, one of our customers is involved. Uh, Hannah Board and Lucy with the 200 Foundation. So it's pretty cool. There's uh, Pride and Joy in My Life, my son and daughter, that's Jack and Jen. Uh, they're both involved in the business, and it's very cool to uh, uh, have you Vinny in the background. Involved. Yeah, Vinny in the background, yeah, my brother-in-law, yeah. My dad, so this was at IAPA maybe uh, three years ago, maybe he's about 89 there, 90. He's 92 now, he's doing pretty good. I talk to him every day, he's, got, he's on Facebook all the time. He's uh, tweeting and social media, and he makes more sense than than uh, some politicians that tweet. He's got his own badge, too. He didn't have to play. He's got his own badge. Time. He's not going in there with your badge. He's got his own badge. This is my granddaughter, Olivia, and uh, she loves pinball. This is uh, probably about a few months ago. She just turned two, and she goes and climbs under the game, puts the game on, and climbs on the chair and starts the game. As soon as she can reach one uh, flipper, but she she's reaches really one flipper yeah. and flips it, and uh, she's she's gonna be a pinball player for sure. Loves it. Can't help Loves it. it. Yeah. Um, this is you know somebody asked me what my next business is, so I threw this in there. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, to Hawaii if if the storms. In fact, Hurricane Olivia is going to Hawaii, so I thought that was kind of funny. This is my coconut stand in fly, in uh, Hawaii. So I figure it's gotta be easier than having a pinball company. There on the right side is all my inventory, in the middle is my workspace with my machete, and on the left side is my waste product. So um, it's a pretty easy, uh, it's pretty easy. Tommy, where are you going? 
Okay. Well, don't go anywhere. Hi, Sue. Got the next one, boys. So speaking of uh, Tommy, we found Tommy at his outdoor office before. Yeah, he was hard at it, boy. <laughs> we, we found, we, like but wait a minute, don't go anywhere. But, you know, we found Tommy at his outdoor office, and he was, uh, and then we found Tommy at his indoor office. Go back, boys. What'd you do, you know? But Jack, he's got water. So he's, yeah, he's he's at his indoor office there. He was just hanging out. There. You know, he just, just he had to go find some peace and quiet to take care of the customers, what he always does. And instead he found us. We're really proud that he's our distributor and he is great. Uh, you know, they take care of everybody as, as if they want to be taken care of. And it's really a wonderful thing um, that you guys are involved in. I love, I love you guys, I really do. So yeah, so uh, I'll I'll text you the pictures. You can put them up on your website certainly. So, and that's all I have. If anybody has any questions, uh, I'm willing to. Uh, okay. Yes. You have a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering about your your themes of your games and how how does that how does that get decided what your next theme is? And being from Jersey Shore, are you going to do a Bruce Springsteen game? So. Um, you know, when I look for, I look for family-friendly themes. I'm not, I'm not like a blood and guts kind of guy. Uh, I, I'm not into that. It's, it's nothing wrong with that, but you know, I'm not into the old guns and blood and everything. I think pinball should be really fun. So I kind of pick things that are fun. And uh, Bruce Springsteen, you know, love pinball, and he's just things about it and a bunch of songs and everything. So if uh, this podcast uh, in its form makes its way to Bruce, and he wants to do a pinball machine, just uh, Call me, 1-800, what's my phone number? Stand up. 433 1-800-473-JACK. Jack. So, Bruce, if you're out there and you want to do Bruce. a pinball machine, let me know. Yes? How many uh, units have you shipped? Uh, we probably shipped about 1,600 so far. Did you get one? Okay, well, there's still time for you. There's still time. Next. Jonathan, you can ask questions anytime. He didn't ask it. Yeah. I know. It's okay. Wait, let me come up there with the microphone. It will be more fun to ask him, probably. Um, so last year at Expo, you refused Pirates, and it's taken quite some time to get it into production. Take the mic, take the mic, quick. <laughs> Did you, uh, well, you briefly mentioned that uh, Pat Lowe's next game is scheduled for next year. So there's not going to be a reveal at Expo this year. I didn't say that. You said that. Yeah, I don't know. You know, the model that we're on really is to show a game and to ship the game. You know, personally, I'm tired of pre-orders. I'm tired of showing things and then people have to wait like six months or a year. I think it's better, you know, how would you feel if you walked across the street to a restaurant and ordered something and you're hungry right now? And the guy said, okay, give me uh, $5 for this $20 meal and come back in three months and I'll give you your dinner. You know? So it's a wacky thing in pinball. We're all wacky. You know, we want our toys. I think it's better if um, it's better if I have a game and I can give you a game. That's what I'd rather do. It, right now, it doesn't mean that we might not show a game in October. So you'll have to stay tuned and see what we do next month. But, you know, you're very astute to ask those questions. You know. Thank you, filthy animal. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> very astutely evaded, too. Yeah. It's on the answer, eh? I actually don't know a little bit how you started the company. Oh, that's pretty well documented. I know, uh, but you don't know it, though. Yeah. How much time? Uh, my flight leaves in a little bit, but... Uh, so, you know, um, I have a company called PinballSales.com. So that company I started uh, like in the end of 1999 to sell amusement games, not only pinball, but other games to the home market. And really at the time, nobody was doing that. And I was laughed at by a lot of amusement industry people. And they said, you know, you'll be out of business in six months. Christmas only comes one time a year. You know, fast forward, for whom the bell tolls, um, you know, we became Stern Pinball's biggest distributor in the world. Uh, we sold thousands of the games over many years. Around 2009 or so, in the recession, we went from selling more than a thousand games a year to about 50 games a year. 
A lot of people thought it was the economy. I kind of thought it was games that maybe didn't appeal to all of our customers. So in 2010, I was thinking about, you know, doing, doing this thing. And here's what happens, you know. If you ever have dinner parties or you're a cook or you invite people, somebody comes to you and say, you know, why don't you open a restaurant? That would be the greatest thing in the world. And I'll come there and, and you know, it'll be great, you know. And um, so a lot of people would tell me, why don't you open a company and build pinball machines, you know? So, you know, it's like me telling you right now, you know, climb to the top of this building and leap off and uh, do a somersault and then land in this little glass of water. I knew it was extremely difficult. I was, you know, I would, used to be at the factory with Gary Stern, eight o'clock at night, picking screws off the floor and throwing them back into the bins. So I wasn't really completely, uh, you know, uneducated, let's say. So anyway, by January 1st of 2011, I went on a little podcast and I announced that I'm gonna start Jersey Jack and Mo. I didn't wanna name it after myself, a lot of customers. That's my pen name in Replay Magazine. I've been writing for more than 15 years of replay. I didn't like the name either because I'm from Brooklyn, so when they named me that, I didn't want that name. So they gave me the name, it stuck, that was it. Now you signed it on everything. Then nine days later, a lot of people wanted to order a game that nobody saw, and we didn't have a factory. And, and I said, okay, let people pre-order this thing. And oh, you know, probably not gonna happen. You know, I, I never doubted it, but I thought it was kind of like far-reaching, you know, and I picked a number, $6,500, which was probably like as much as a pinball machine cost in those days, you know. And uh, the first day we got about 130 orders. People, you know, put down 250 bucks and PayPal locked my account. And I thought it was a scam and then I explained to them what I was doing. The next day we got like another 150 orders. They locked the account and they said, I explained what I was doing again, and they said, well, you can't have a PayPal account because you gotta ship something in 90 days. You can't ship something in like a year and a half. So, um, you know, I, I brought in a lot of good people from the industry to design the game. You know, Joe Balsa was here before. He was the lead designer of uh, Wizard of Oz. It wasn't a one-person thing. It was a lot of people thing, a lot of collaborative effort. And um, it, was, it was difficult, you know, Mike's story, uh, that you heard before, for those fortunate enough to hear a story. Um, you know, this is, there's a lot of easier things to do than starting a pinball company. And you know, luckily, the people that bought games in the beginning and waited, and we thought in a year and a half we would have games. It wasn't a year and a half, it took 27 months. Um, you know, we lost a lot of money in the beginning uh, because the game took longer to make and cost more to make because Guess what, that's life. It's always gonna take longer and cost more. We put more into the game. And uh, the testament to what we put in the game is out there. You know, to me, it's, it's still a great game. And I got, somebody told me yesterday, you know, I didn't play my Wizard of Oz in a little while and I put it on and it's amazing. I forgot how amazing it was. So it changed a lot of things. You know, years ago, when there was only one company building games, there were only a few shows a year. Now there's a few shows every weekend. There was nobody making pinball mods. There wasn't everybody in their grandmother thinking, well, if that idiot could start a pinball company, I can go start a pinball company. You know, so uh, competition is good. It makes, it raises the bar for everybody. Yeah, prices went up, but you know what? Uh, you can't buy a Bentley for 20 grand. You know, if you want to buy something really good, like our games, we believe uh, our market it's going to cost a little more because. It takes a lot more to make what we're making, so it's a little bit more difficult. And we appreciate the customer's uh, loyalty. So that's kind of like the very short version of that story. Um, I don't, I'm not ready to yet sit in the rocking chair and look back in the rearview mirror. You know, maybe, um, maybe about 40 years from now, Jonathan will say to me, you know, one of those big gigantic books that I make, let's write something about how uh, you crazy started a pinball company. I don't know. If I want to really go down that road, but you know, never know, never know. So anyway, sooner I don't know. We'll see. We're all we're all young. We have some time, hopefully. Anybody else? So yes. Well, they can go two ways, right? They can go up or down. I guess they can go sideways too. Right? So yeah. So look, you know, I think the cycle of pinball we're at. 
um, is right about here, going that way. Okay. Um, you know, economy or not, the good economy is great because uh, uh, you know most of what we sell, we sell everything nobody needs, right? Uh, unfortunately, the operator side of the industry. It's, you know, more operators are adopting pinball machines and they're making money with them, but they're typically operators that love pinball anyway. So they buy something for X thousands of dollars, they operate it, it's a component of their business, and then they might sell it later pretty close to what they bought it for. Um, you know, it's, it's not a lead item. If I put a pinball machine into like a great family entertainment center, like, you know, like a game like The Wizard of Oz at a really good amusement center, might make $100 a day. But a crane that picks up tickets might make a thousand dollars a day. So if the crane is five grand and the pinball machine is five grand, which is not, the return on investment is what people care about. But um, there is a place for pinball, and you know, going to China is good. I mean, we, we can't even build enough pinball machines to satisfy the world markets that we have now. So if tomorrow China said to us, the country as one said, "Hi, we want ten thousand pinball machines," uh, that's a problem. I got people that ordered a thousand pirate games that were still trying to get out of the building. So we can't build them fast enough, and that's that's a that's a good problem. It's a problem. It's a good problem to have. I mean, I could have games with nobody to buy them, so it could be worse. But I think we're, you know, I think you're going to see a lot more pinball shows and more people coming into the hobby side of things, more families. Years ago, these shows were what I call us freaks and geeks. You know. Primarily guys that didn't shower in a week or two playing the pinball pinball tournaments and you know if there was one girl at the show like every guy was like following the girl and, you know now you see women families children gee you know it's becoming uh, more mainstream so that's that's a good thing you know that's a good thing yes So the visuals, you're talking about the animation on the screen and everything like that. We have a, one of our people is a really talented guy, J.P. DeWin from Holland, and uh, he's been with us from the beginning, and he's just an amazing asset to the company because he does all that. He does all the work of 10, everything. easy. Huh? He does the work of 10, the guy's amazing. Yeah, and he's got such I'm a good money. Just line. say, listen, he's, he's okay, he's all right. Yeah. He's all right, he's okay. Yeah, he's just okay. Yeah. Um, I, this might be a stupid question, but internally, um, what, what's driving the logic inside? Is it off the shelf PC type parts, or is it custom? What, you want to answer that? In the yeah, I mean, I can answer it, but you've got to do something. I paid for this trip, so <laughs> say something. For God's uh, sake. Fingers something. killing me from switching slides here. It's killing me. Uh, yeah, it's a commercial off the shelf uh, um, CPU board. Intel processor and we're we're changing that a little from time to time because they're they're so quickly obsolete you know the C CPU boards but uh, yeah <coughs> we're running them off a of commercial a lot of U USB control the lights USB control to the I O board which then you know has all the, the field effect transistors on the FETs that, that drive all the coils and the motors and the lights and everything else so, yeah yeah and that's why you can update with a USB stick and, and download it, an update, just put it in through the coin door and, and it'll download the, the software it's correct, connected right back up into the box of the CPU or USB, USB ports all over the place. Okay. In the beginning, you know, I was criticized for putting a computer in the game. And maybe rightfully so, you know, other people have other ideas to put a dedicated board in there because Maybe that computer in years to come is going to be obsolete and everything like that. You know, maybe in years to come there's going to be a little chip in your head this big also. I don't know what's going to happen in years to come, but you know what I know? You know that out there we're fixing pinball machines that are like 60 years old, 70 years old. So when I'm long gone, some enterprising individual will figure out what they have to put in the game when uh, there's a lot of motherboards in the world. Somebody will figure out what to put in there instead, you know, or keep it running, one or the other. Or make it into an electromechanical game. Right? Yeah, kind of the old there we go. Anybody else? Jonathan, you talked out. You're okay. Good. So you know, I just want to thank everybody again. You know, for me, um, you know, some people say to me, uh, "Gee, you came out from New Jersey, and you know, it's a long way to come." And you know, it's not. I a came long from way New Mexico. To, it's not a long way to go. Yeah, you came from New Mexico, but you. You're not going home though. You're gonna, no, no, you're yeah. gonna saunter down to Seattle. I got some friends I can hang out with. 
yeah, you're going to go to Seattle, you're going to be at Seattle Pinball Museum, you're going to take care of repairing yeah. some trolley stuff yeah. there and help yeah, him well, out we'll and do some hand holding with him and his dog, you know, <laughs> and his lovely dog. wife. So me, I get to come out here for a half hour and I get back on a plane today and I'll land in New Jersey at, hopefully at 6.30 tomorrow morning. So, uh, you know, but I do appreciate being here. Thank you. And you guys, if you get a chance, talk to anybody in a purple shirt around here. They're fixing games. They're, they're doing all this for you guys, for people like Jack and I to be able to come and just hit the ground and start start bingling and talking with people of like mind. That's because Tommy creates a place for us all. Thank you, come. Tommy. And all these guys are working hard. So say thank you as many times as you can. That's it. We'll be in your head.